Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. So last Friday I went down to the coast to photograph some ducks and it went far better than I thought it was going to go and I want to share that experience with you. Now I took a little bit of vlog while I was there, I think actually I did it on my phone, I think at the beginning I did it in portrait mode so I apologise for that. And the thing that was so great was just the light was just magical and it made for a lot of great shots. One of the things I just quickly want to say before I go to the video is when you're doing birds in flight, which I do a lot of, yes, the autofocus is important. Yes, the frames per second is important, but you've also got to use techniques to maximize the opportunity to get as many good shots as you can. And one thing that's so important, I think, is pre-focusing. You've really got to, and I'm constantly looking at something else at the same distance of the birds and I'm constantly focusing on it waiting for the bird to then take off so when it takes off to the area that I want it I've already pre-focused on something else in that area and it just lets the autofocus know where you plan to focus and as a result of that it's a lot quicker to lock onto to photos rather than just saying well I've got an amazing autofocus there's a bird go it doesn't work like that every autofocus system needs a little bit of help telling it where to focus and so that's something to bear in mind pre-focusing is essential for getting more keepers when doing birds in flight and i'll probably do a dedicated video about that in the future anyway here's going back to last friday thanks so much for watching the, the video and please subscribe if you enjoy the content take care hello everybody i hope you can hear me because i'm on my phone i don't have speakers and stuff but i've just finished the session the light's just about gone and I'm down on the coast and I just came literally, I got here at four, I've had an hour and a half, it's probably two and a half hours drive here and back. So, you know, I'm traveling for two and a half hours for an hour, hour and a half um, photography, but it's been so worth it. Um, I've been to this place before. I made a video earlier about techniques for shooting for shorebirds. There's some good tips on there if you want to have a look, that's somewhere in the library. Um, but I've just, uh, it's mid-March and the ducks are going to be gone soon. So I've come down here and I wanted to get some portraits, but actually I've just been really lucky with flight shots. And they've had a lot of Eurasian visions here and they're just so beautiful. And uh, um, so what I've done is I sat down there. I usually sit on this jetty thing that I'm on here. Ow from the beach but instead today I thought I'd sit over here and I could have more of this green stuff over here as the background because I don't want the sky so basically the birds would sometimes swim along here and then they would take off from over here and then fly into there and I think that's where they roost and they would only be in the sky literally for a second or two and I would just be wanting to get them when they're in this area here and I've got my D500 in the bag but I didn't touch it because the um there because the OM1 has just been so good so you don't get every shot but it picks up the bird so well and you still need to pre-focus. There's a couple of long grasses there and I'm constantly pre-focusing on them. And then when the bird hits the sky, I can't get it immediately. But by the time it comes back down in the middle of all this lovely stuff with nice backgrounds, that's when I'm hopefully gonna get some in focus. So this is the area that I chose to sit down on, which I thought would give me the best angle um, for the split second that the birds were going to be in the area that I wanted to. Luckily I had my overalls on so I could get dirty and wet. So I sat down there and I just targeted that area where I'm pointing there, hoping for the birds to land, fly through that area. Like last time, I think I'll describe the pictures with a voiceover rather than just play music because it saves me having to put all the details up on the captions and that takes me forever. So, as I said, I was so lucky with the light. There were a number of different species. Um, I had f male and female Eurasian widgeons. There were some green teals, although 
the male green teals weren't flying, only the females. And then there was a few shorebirds that flew past and landed quite close to me. And a very confiding cormorant, which was very different from my usual experiences of cormorants who fly off as soon as they see you. So it was mostly the widgeons flying. But yeah, those were the species that were dealing. So the first shot, let's show this one. This is a not, not very special shot. It's basically the widgeon with the blue sky in the background. Now this is basically showing you, it's a fine picture, the wing position is nice, it's sharp, you can see all the colours, I haven't blown the whites. Um, it's four, it's one three thousand two hundredth of a second, ISO 320, F4, everything I shot was at F4 to maximise the shutter speed with slight overcompensation um, for exposure compensation. Now this just illustrates that I don't really like a blue background. If you look online, 90% of duck shots are with the sky as a background. And that can work, but it's just not something that's particularly interesting to me. So I just put that up now just to contrast it to the shots I'm going to show you later. So yeah, there was the Eurasian widgeon. As you can see, they are beautiful birds. Right, now let's show this next shot. This is very typical of the shots that I got. Now I got a million shots like this, a lot of them sharp. I may have slightly blown the whites on that one, but I couldn't be bothered to go through all of them choosing which one was the best. So this is the one I chose for the video. This is again a millisecond before it lands. So you wait until it flies. It's literally in the air for about two seconds. You've got to hope that the camera can lock on, which it did. And then in that split second before it lands, try and get some shots. And with the 50 frames per second or 25 frames per second, whichever I was shooting, um, it enabled me to get a load of keepers. So again, 4,000th of a second, F4, ISO 100. You really do need speed when you're shooting this kind of action. So yeah, another Eurasian male widgeon. Right, let's look at the cormorant. So the cormorant was very um, confident and came very close to me. And he actually came into the pool right in front of me. And here's a shot. And you can see that lovely light hitting the rock in the background. I usually wouldn't like the green algae on the water line there but I think the fact that the bird has got so much detail I love the water drops coming off the beak that I you know I still think it makes a great shot despite that algae on the rock which yeah um, and then he posed a bit for me and um, I got a number of shots here's the first one of him just looking back to me nice soft colors in the background and then a fly landed on his beak and he kind of looked surprised and then the fly took off and his head went and again I like the shot and again just look at that light and I know I've said in the past that you should shoot even in harsh light because the sun can go behind the clouds and it allows you to get high shutter speeds for those flight shots and that is the case you can still get lucky with those shots especially if a bird doesn't have a load of white in it but you cannot replace great light you just can't and that's why I drove all this way to get just an hour's or an hour or so's photography because I expected the light to be and the whole experience was absolutely fantastic and I got so many great shots with beautiful light so here's the cormorant you can see the blues a little bit in in the uh, wings there the cormorant shots were f4 about one thousandth of a second iso 200 yeah they were all four thousandth of a second f4 about iso 200 right so next i got a couple of shots of a female till coming in now here's a shot which isn't sharp at all actually this is a throwaway shot but it was nearly a perfect shot because I absolutely love the setting the background and I love the fact that the eye is in between the shadow of the wings now I edited it for the sake of this video just to show this is a near miss this was the kind of shot that I really wanted to get and unfortunately I slightly missed focus I think I didn't tr lock on as quick as I should have done um, but yeah, nearly miss. This could have been a beautiful, beautiful shot. And then here's another Eurasian female, uh, yeah, um, green teal, I think they're also called Eurasian teal actually, um, land just before it lands. Again, it's relatively sharp. It's not a great shot. Um, these birds were a lot smaller than the widgeons, so that I didn't get many sh chances. But this was just another one, just to show that light on the background, which I love. Little 
um, Little Ring Plover came and landed right in front of me. And again, just look at the light. I love this. F4, 1,600 for second. ISO 200. Exposure compensation plus three. Beautiful little birds. Lots of detail. And I love the contrast of the sand and the water. And then, so I don't go on too long, I'll just go show one of my favourite shots from the day. There was a whole... A section of when the bird was about to land and then suddenly blanked. Now usually when the bird was about to land I would stop taking pictures because I didn't want to fill up the memory card but on this occasion I kept going and it banked and kept flying towards me and there was about five or six shots where it just had these amazing wing poses and this was probably my favorite shot of the day. This is F4 2500th of a second ISO 1000. It was getting pretty dark at this point but Again, I wouldn't have got this shot if I didn't have such a high frame rate. And that really did make the difference. It meant I could get so many different wing positions. So yeah, those are just a selection of the many shots I took on the day. Which is going to take me forever. Here's one more actually. Which is going to take me forever to edit. 3,200 for a second. F4, ISO 800. I just like the fact you can just see the eye and the head in the wings there, I think I might have slightly blown the whites. Again, as I said, I'm, I haven't been through the pictures yet, so I haven't even chosen all my best ones, so there might be better ones than this. But anyway, those are the pictures. Mm -hmm.